Hello, I'm Peachy, and today we are going to be reviewing a copy of Speed Paints 2.0. Now, I'm a big fan of using contrast paints, I use them a lot in my painting. Never tried the original Speed Paint, so I can't make any judgments on that. We've been nicely sent this set to review. Um, I'm going to be putting it to the test in my normal way of painting. There's plenty of other channels out there that have done an in-depth review of each of the colours and how they all work. We're just going to put them into a test, into a hobby environment, so sticking on some models, having a bit of fun, and I'll pick Marines for this, and I'm going to do a White Scar, and Imperial Fist, and a Blood Angel, and see how we get on. So stay tuned and see what messes I make, because that's what I do, I'm messy. Messy painting. So our first model we're going to paint is going to be a white scar and we're going to be doing this over white undercoat. So I'm going to stop talking. We're going to get some paint on the model and show you how it's going to be done as intended. After white undercoat, I'm going to use my first bead paint, which is poppy red. This is for all the red details. So picking out that eagle and getting those markings. And before we do anything with that armor, so applying a speed paint to that, I'm going to make sure I get all these other colors on and then I can correct them with white if I make any mistakes. Because as you can see, these markings are a little bit rough. Then for the wax details, I'm going to get some poppy red as well, but I'm just going to thin that down slightly just so it's more pinky. Then it's on to picking out all the black details. Again, I'm not being so concerned if I get this on the white, because again, I can tidy it back up if I need to before we do that armor. And for silver details, I'm going to be using broadsword silver. So this is quite a weird one for me because I'm used to applying silver and just coating over models. So this is like a silver contrast, very new to this idea. But as you can see, nice, quick, easy results. Personally, I prefer just using silver, but I can see how this is going to be beneficial for people on a tight deadline or just want some color on a model. Then for any parchment, I'm going to use bony matter. Now, after all those colors have been applied, I'm going to get some white and just tidy up. So, you know, where I've got markings, it's a bit messy, where the black may have gone onto some of the white details. It's just about going around the model, quickly tidying up before we apply all over that armor with a gray. And for the armor, I'm going to be using ashen stone. Now, I've thinned this down a little bit. I'm going to be applying that all over the model. As you can see, it's a perfect consistency and the color settles in nicely across the mini. Um, I'm also going to add some extra in those deeper recesses if it doesn't have enough punch. But again, just take your time, be mindful, and you will see some pooling here and there. And with that pooling, just get a brush, dry it off, and soak up any of that excess. Now for some extra effects here, I'm just gonna get some of that white, and I'm just gonna run my brush across the edge just to pick out any of those edges on the armor, and also to do some chipping across those red markings as well. You don't have to do this, I just think it looks cool and adds an extra level of depth. And also once doing that, I'm gonna get some occultist cloak, I'm gonna sponge chip this. Now I've used sponge chipping with contrast before, so I'm gonna see how this works with the speed paint. And as you can see, it is pretty good. I'm just gonna remove some off on the sponge onto some tissue paper and just gently dab that across any armor panels. And that occultist gray is popping out quite nice and giving the armor a nice battered look. And it's just a matter of picking out those blue details such as the eyes and the consoles. And I'm using magic blue for this. And then just to finish that model off, just to add a bit of punch to that black leather. I'm just gonna highlight that with castle gray. So there we have it, our white scar is finished. I'm pretty chuffed with the results to be fair. There's a few little things I'd do differently. So the red itself is a bit pinky. Maybe it needs an extra coat. Um, the armor itself, I know I thinned it down, didn't use it straight from the part. I think it's the perfect tone of gray, but it did need thinning down to get more of that white shown. Otherwise there'd have been a lot more work to tidy that white back up. Um, the sponge chipping worked really well. I was really pleased with that. The silver stuff, um, it's ideal for beginners. Really like the effects it gives. Um, personally, I just use silver and wash it. That's that's just a personal thing, choice of mine, but I can see how useful that'll be for someone that doesn't want to do that and just wants to get some color straight on, especially over white. Um, the reactivation thing's been talked to death with Army Painter. I had no issues with the speed paints, no reactivation. I highlighted over them. I washed over some of the colors. I even used ashen gray over the red markings, which dulled the red down a little bit in places. No reactivation. I would have expected some bleed. There was no bleed. So that was really, really good. So all in all, minimal effort, maximum effect. I like my white scar. Looks mega. So our white scar is done. I'm now gonna move on to an Imperial Fist. Now I've found a new way of doing yellow, which I'm really fond of, which is using a pink spray and then giving it a dusting over of white. You could dry brush over with white if you wanted to. 
the thing with this is you need a nice contrast, a nice strong tone of like a yellow ink or a yellow contrast. So I'm gonna be using mage yellow here to see if that works with this effect and then just add loads of other colors to make it look like an Imperial Fist. So I'm eager to see if this method's gonna work with speed paint. I'm fairly confident it's gonna, but we'll see. So for our Imperial Fist, we're gonna start off by undercoating it with pixie pink. And then once that's done, we're gonna dust over a bit of white. Like I said before, you can always dry brush this with white if you wanted to. So what I'm gonna do now is get mage yellow and apply this all over. So this is gonna be the proof of the pudding to see if this works for this effect. And as you can see, it's a perfect consistency and the color's nice, it settles nicely across the mini and has some really nice depth to those recesses as well. So, so far, so good, really pleased with this. So to add some extra punch to those edges, I'm just gonna dry brush with some skeleton bone. Now, at first I initially do this with armor if, if it's all over, in hindsight, I looked at it, it didn't really make that much of a difference, but the important bit to know is it actually didn't reactivate as well. So that's good. It didn't rub off because I'm quite heavy with my dry brushing. Um, so there was no reactivation, no rubbing off, and you can choose whether to highlight a bone or not. It doesn't really make that much difference in hindsight. Then it's picking out all those black details with grim black. Now, I had some issues here because I splodged a bit purposely because I wanted to see how I corrected that. Um, in hindsight, I should have done this during the pink and white stage um, before I applied the yellow, but that's just a learning on my part. Now to correct this, uh, if you have done it my way, is to get some skeleton bone uh, for any splodges, just coat over those and then get some mage yellow. The only difference here, it will have a slight greenier tone, but it's not the end of the world, especially if it's small splodges on edges of armor. Now for the silver speed paint or broadsword silver as it's known, I wanted to try this to see what it looked like over black. Now, bear with me because in my head it should work, but it's a speed paint sl slash contrast effect, so it probably shouldn't work, but it's given it more of a gun metal effect. It's quite dark, it's, it's subtle, but I just wanted to see if it worked over black. And I'm not that concerned by it. I can always dry brush a highlight of silver if I need to, but it does go to show that it's still got some punch that you can see metallic elements to it. So if you wanted like a deep, dark, or a Kai kind of armor, you could apply this over black and you'll still get some metallic effects. On the other hand, I applied Hoplite Gold and that really punched out. I was actually quite surprised on how bright that was. So um, I'll be doing that again. Um, I'm really, really surprised by how punchy Hoplite Gold is over black. Then I want to do some more sponge chipping here. I'm using Satchel Brown, and again, really pleased with the effects. It's looking nice, it's doing what I wanted to do. So yeah, big win for that. Then picking out like the purity seal, wax, and the parchment, I'm gonna use some skeleton bone for that as well, and then apply some poppy red to the wax, and then some bony matter to the parchment. Then all I'm gonna do here is get some white, pick out the eyes and the consoles and then apply some magic blue to those eye lenses and contours. Really nice color as well. And then again, get some castle black and highlight that leather. I'm also gonna use it on the gun casing as well, just to add a little bit more punch to that. So our Imperial Fist is done. It behaved exactly as I hoped it would, which was applying a yellow over the pink and white spray. So I was really pleased with that. Uh, it's a really nice color as well. It kind of sits somewhere between Imperial Fist and I, I guess Ironed in Yellow, so I quite like that. It's like a nice, richer a richer yellow. The chipping worked well. The only issue I really had was correcting mistakes. Now, in hindsight, I should have changed the order. should have done the black before I applied the yellow. Um, so that's the only thing I found with that. Sometimes with like contrasts, you can mix in a bit of base paint into the contrast, like a bone or whatever. So I kind of tried to do that, but it didn't quite work. So I just painted it bone, applied mage yellow, slightly different effect. Really intrigued by the metallics as well. I've used them a couple of times at home, uh, so I know what they can do over white and light undercoats, but it'd be, it was interesting to see what it looked like over black. Again, effects was a dark gun metal, very much like Uruk High Armor, but that gold was quite surprising on how punchy that gold was, so big win there, quite like that. Um, all in all, great results, no reactivation, did some highlighting, that was fine, there was no mixing in. Um, even with the tying up of the black with like whites and yellows, again, nothing weird happened, so yeah another win. One minor issue we found was, we're not quite sure at the moment how it happened, but on the actual gun casing, as it's dried the black, it's pulled away and you can see some of that pink and white showing through. That might be because I was too aggressive with the hair dry, it was on too much of a higher heat. It wasn't really cold in this room, so I don't think it was a cold element, so it might have been just me being a bit impatient and just blasting it with hot air, and that's probably what's done it. So you'll notice that probably on the 360 as it's going around. Like, what the hell is that pink highlighting you've done on the gun there, PG? That, that's probably a painter error. Although I'm gonna put that on me 
we'll just see again because we're testing these out if it if it crops up again again it might be me might be the paint don't know let's see blood angels next let's go red so for our undercount on the blood angel i decided to go with skeleton bone now the reason for doing this is i wanted to try a more muted base if you like for the red because i tried it with like the bright reds over white and stuff like that and they were just too bright too candy so i thought let's have a darker tone as the undercoat and see if that affects the red um, so that's why I've gone with skeleton bone so what I'm going to do here is get poppy red again it's neat so I'm going to place all over it's got a nice perfect consistency the colors settling nicely what I'm expecting here as well as it dries it will pull away from the edges a bit more to give you a bit of a natural highlight um, but as you can see it's applying getting into those depths settling really nicely and just good application all over Now I'm used to using Black Legion and applying that straight over red, so I wanted to see if Grim Black had a similar effect, if it could coat over some of that red. One coat, not so, couple of coats, actually it, it did hide it a lot. So all I'm gonna do here is black out all those details like the gun, the undersuit, but in this case, because it's Grim Black and you just need a couple of coats, it's not got as much pigment as Black Legion would have, but I'm fine with that. Then I'm gonna apply Broadsword Silver to any silver details, again, Still works well over black. Weirdly, this looks lighter than the Imperial Fist, but that might be because I shook it up more, I don't know. Um, but I'm happy with the results. I just wanted to try that again, see what it looked like. And Hoplite Gold doing what Hoplite Gold did and just punching out quite nicely. Then I'm gonna pick out whites for the eyes, purity seals, consoles, etc., in preparation for like some other colors. And because the Blood Angels, I'm gonna go for green eyes. And for this, I'm using Shamrock Green. I'll also apply that to the consoles on their wrists as well. Now I'm going to move on to highlighting, so this is like an extra step thing, you can leave your models as is, but I just want to try some nice highlights on here, so I'm going to get Castle Grey again, with the highlights of the black leather, really like Castle Grey as well, really nice colour. So work your way around, do some scratchy effects as well. Now for the highlights for the red armour, I did spend a little bit of time trying every orange and red under the sun that army painters supply, just to, because I was trying to find something close to what I normally use, like Wild Rider Red. Um, and some of them just were a bit too muted. Some of the, because it's poppy red, it's new. I've never tried it before. It's not quite the same as some of the uh, contrast that we use. So I was trying to find a color that worked well with it. In the end, I found Elf Flesh was really, really nice. Added a bit of punch. And because as it dries, it will show some of that red through. It's not reactivating. It's just natural that some of that color will punch through, especially if you use really light highlights. If you like highlighted pink with white, it'll look like a really light pastely pink. So Elf Flesh, just seemed like the right kind of colour to do. So I decided to highlight the whole lot with Elf Flesh, do some little bits of chipping, a little bit of battering. And it kind of tied in quite nicely with some of those highlights coming through from the uh, skeleton bone as well. And then just to try something out on this model, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna apply some washes over those metallics just to see if it reactivates, see if it does anything. So I got some dark tone, applied it over the silver, applied it over the gold. Guess what? Didn't reactivate, look great. So there we are. Washes work over this as well. So our Blood Angel is done. Now we had some issues with the Blood Angel. First of all, the darker undercoat worked great. Uh, so it opens up actually using different tones of undercoat to see what effects you can get from them. So I was quite pleased with that muted red that we got from it. What we did find, and I'm quite confused by this, I'm not quite sure how it's happened. So our reds cracked and our blacks cracked a bit. And we've been looking over some of the models, some of the other ones like the Imperial Fist had a little bit of cracking. Again, is it because I used an undercoat? Diff like the bony undercoat is it because i used a hair dry is it a combination of the two so me and pat decided to do some rigorous testing so we got a sprue we sprayed it up we tried different undercoats we tried different colors some hair dried some really heavily hair dried some super hot some not um and we couldn't recreate those conditions and we're not quite sure why it's cracked i think it's a personal error on my part i think i may it, te it seems to be where it's pulled the most um, so I think it's down to that. It's pulled a lot and I might have blasted with too much heat. That's that's my thought on why this has happened. Um, the other thing that we did have, so we talked about no reactivation. Um, so we've like dry brushed over, we've highlighted over, we've even washed over colors. But what was weird was when I applied snow to the base, it was fine. Um, started to dry, left it to the sides, finished watching my favorite TV show went to bed woke up the next morning it bled around the edges just a little bit just a little bit of red has gone into the snow um what i am going to do because i'm not done it yet because i want you to see what that looks like is i'm now going to have a go at putting some more snow on top let that dry and see if it continues to bleed and if it doesn't great that hides the issue um because it might just be the way i i applied it i don't know 
Um, so that's just something I'm going to try and test now. So we'll just see if that makes that much of a difference. Um, but yeah, not quite sure where the, where the Kraken's coming from. So we'll see if that's just a, 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 user, a user error, which is me, because, well, I am an error. So there we have it. We've tested Speed Paint 2.0. Honestly, and this is honest, big fan, lots of choice, more tools to the toolbox. I like using contrast style paints. Uh, there's obviously plenty more out there, um, but with the speed paint ones I've got, because I did, in fact, I'm gonna grab it now so you can see it. I made a little list of comparisons to contrasts versus speed paints, just so I can, for me, when I'm working out at home, what that looks like, like, is this one close to this color? Is this one close to that color? There's a lot more tones in between some of the Citadel ones as well, so I've got more choice. Um, some of the tones are slightly lighter or slightly darker, so that gives me even more choice. Um, and, for me personally, there's a there's a wider selection of greens and fleshes as well, and I like to play around with like camos and flesh tones and stuff like that. So that's really nice. Other than the weird red situation we've that we've had, uh, no reactivation. Um, obviously, we're still working out what what I've done wrong. <laughs> it's probably going to be me. Uh, but all in all, really pleased with them. They do what they they said on the tin, um, and yeah, they're going to get your models on the tabletop quicker and those metallics personally i'll probably use silver and wash but i can see how beneficial they're going to be to someone that's really new hasn't got much time or just want to get some color on a white undercoated model uh hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much to army painter for sending this uh it's been really it's been a blast trying something new i'm always a big fan of new things uh so yeah thank you very much to those guys uh also don't forget to like and subscribe check out the links in the description and also if you want to know how to do different types of yellow as well because we talked about this pink and white version check out this video lots of different varieties in there about nine i think nine different ways of painting yellow so thank you very much alvida zane adieu until our next meeting